God calls Abraham. Once again, the world was sinking into sin. People were fighting, cheating, lying, ignoring God, and hurting each other. It wasn't the way God wanted it to be. And people were building bigger and bigger cities. One of the biggest cities is called Ur. Isn't that a great name? Just two letters, U and R. If someone asked you where you live and you said Ur, they'd say, no, really, where do you live? And you'd say, Ur. And they'd say, stop making that noise. Where do you live? That would be fun. But we don't have many cities with names like Ur today. We have Chicago, Birmingham, London, and Dubai. Oh, that one's kind of fun to say, but not as much fun as a name that sounds like your stomach is growling. Ur. But back to our story. There was a man living in Ur named Abram. You probably know of him as Abraham, because later on God changed his name. But before he was Abraham, he was Abram. Abram lived in Ur with his family. And when I say family, I don't mean his mom and dad. I mean his mom, dad, sisters, brothers, uncles, aunts, cousins, second cousins, third cousins, and on and on. You see, in the ancient world, you were safer if you were in a big group. You were less likely to be robbed or attacked by another group of people if your group of people was really big. Going out on your own in the ancient world was a dangerous thing to do. So people didn't go out on their own. They stuck with their families. One day, God showed up and said, Hey, Abram, I want you to go out on your own. At this point, Abram didn't know much about God. He didn't have the Bible like we do because it hadn't been written yet. He couldn't go to church like we can because there weren't any churches yet. But Abram trusted God. So when God said to Abram, leave your family and follow me, do you know what Abram said? He said, okay. I know, crazy. Why did Abram trust God when he didn't even know him yet? Would you have trusted God if you were Abram? That's not all God said to Abram, though. God told Abram that if he did what God asked, Abram wouldn't be alone. God would be with him. Not only that, but God would give him so many kids and grandkids and great-grandkids that Abram's family would become an entire nation, and they'd have their own land, and the whole world would be blessed, given an amazing gift through Abram and his kids. Wow. So Abram said, Okay. He left his family. He left his country. He left everything behind and wandered off into the middle of nowhere, following a god he just met. He took his wife with him. Her name was Sarai. You probably know her as Sarah, because soon after, God would change her name too. They didn't take any children with them, though, because they didn't have any children. Sarai and Abram really wanted to have children, but God hadn't blessed them with any. Which might make you ask a very important question. How was Abram supposed to build a big, big family that could be a whole nation if he didn't have any children? In the ancient world, having kids was very important. Lots of kids. Why? Because living in the ancient world took a lot of work. You needed people to plant and harvest grain. People to take care of sheep. People to take care of goats. People to take care of camels. If you were attacked by another group of people, you needed people to help fight back. The more kids and grandkids you had, the more help you had in planting and harvesting and shepherding and protecting. The more kids and grandkids you had, the better your life would be, which is why it was so terrible that Abram and Sarai didn't have any kids, and why God's promise that Abram's family would become a nation was so exciting. By now, Abram and Sarai had been following God for 24 years and they had wandered all over the land God said would be theirs. They had wandered down to Egypt and back again, and God had blessed Abram. He now had lots of servants and sheep and goats and camels. The only thing Abram and Sarai still didn't have was kids. Abram was about to give up on the idea of building a family when God told him two things. First, God said, Your name isn't Abram anymore, it's Abraham. And Sarai's name is now Sarah. And Abraham said, Okay. 
Then God said, And next year Sarah will have a baby. And do you know what Abraham did? He laughed. Why did he laugh? Because the next year Sarah would turn 90 years old. Abram had never heard of a 90-year-old woman having a baby. Have you ever heard of a 90-year-old woman having a baby? Abraham tried not to, but he couldn't help it. He laughed. Then God said, And the baby will be named Isaac, which means, get this, he laughs. Isn't that hilarious? A year later, Sarah had a baby boy, and they named him Isaac. Everyone was amazed at this God who could make promises and keep them, even promises that sounded crazy. God wanted to see if Abraham really trusted him, really, really trusted him. So when Isaac was older, God asked Abraham if he would give up his son. Did Abraham really trust God? This was the child they had waited for, the child God had promised, the child God would use to bless the whole world. What if Isaac died? Would God still keep his promise? Would God bring Isaac back to life? Abraham didn't know for sure, but he did know one thing. He trusted God. So Abraham got ready to give up Isaac because God asked him to. But God didn't want Isaac to die. He just wanted to know if Abraham trusted him. As soon as Abraham was ready to give up Isaac, God sent an angel who called out to Abraham from heaven, Stop! Do not lay a hand on the boy. Then something amazing happened. God learned that Abraham would trust him no matter what. Abraham learned that God would keep his promises no matter what. Isaac learned that he could trust God just as much as his father did. He learned that he could trust God with his life. So God said, Now I can use you to build my nation. And that's the story we'll tell next. <laughs>